They just huh. released this uh, uh, new disc live at the Burton Cummings Theater, a CD DVD set. So, John, does it feel like a milestone, milestone to release a live album? It's it does kind of like a, a greatest hits, right? Yeah, it is a bit. It kind of snuck up on us, but I, I think it is. It's kind of a nice, nice selection from um, all four records. And I don't generally uh, listen to the records after they're out, so mm. it's it's kind of nice to uh, hear them all put together the way we we've been hearing them for the past while, and and, and they're probably quite different. Than the than the studio versions. So. Why now? Why why was this the time for the the weaker dance to do the the live record? And by the way, well, if anybody else wants to chime in, please. <laughs> please I'm looking at John, but yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, I think we had done we we uh, this was part of a big cross country, cross Canada tour we did with the Constantines, and it was it was from uh, St. John's to Whitehorse and, and everywhere in between. It was it was a it was a big project for us and 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 uh, something we really enjoyed doing and. And by the middle of it, we were we were in Winnipeg, and and um, it just seemed like a like it would be a good thing to document, I suppose. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, it does it does. It, in as much as it is a, a retrospective of sorts, when you put out a live record, not unlike a, a greatest hits record, were there intra band controversies and debates <laughs> about which songs make it and which don't? Not really. I mean, it was basically the set that we'd been working on for this tour, right. and and so there was <laughs> there was there was little debate about that for sure. No. Yeah, you yeah. know, it's obviously a great night at the Burton Cummings Theater in Winnipeg, yeah. and I, I spoke about how great a theater that is off the top of the show. And you've right. got this great rapport with your audience there, uh, your hometown. But is it true that you've only recently come around to enjoying the live aspect of being in a band? It's true. I mean, it, it's not that recent. I think I think that it took me a long time to be comfortable on stage and to actually start to enjoy it because um, uh, for, for a long time, I think I think the turning point for me came when when our first record came out and the Rio Statics invited us out here for their Green Sprouts Week, th yeah. that thing they used to do where yeah. they'd have a week of shows. Yeah, yeah. And it was really, it was one of the first times I'd really been to Toronto. It was, you know, it was a huge thrill for us and they brought us out and we we opened for them for a week or five five nights at the Horseshoe or something. It was yeah. at Ted's. At Ted's, Ted's yeah, Wrecking okay, Yard. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, it departed Ted's Wrecking Yard. Yeah. But um, and and to me, they they demonstrated how um, how live music could be uh, kind of ecstatic and joyful, and and um, that if if you have a good time, uh, the audience will likely have a good time, mm. and and that and it can be a, a kind of communicative act instead right. of instead of a band standing on stage and and kind of dictating songs. Why stuff. weren't you having a good time? Before? Oh, I don't know. I think it was just it was just getting used. I mean, it's a it's a kind of terrifying <laughs> thing to do yeah, sometimes. sometimes. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. you know, it's just it's just a bit frightening. I just find it found it a bit frightening. And I still find find Winnipeg shows kind of nerve-wracking um, just I've heard this about. Now, why would Winnipeg? Don't you, your hometown. I, I don't know. I just think you look out into the crowd and you see you see people that you right. that you know are also people you don't know but you've seen, you know, right. on the bus and stuff. It's right. just a little just seems a little opportunity. And but if you if you suck in Winnipeg, then that's it's, right. <laughs> it's real. You're really letting down the team, it's right? It's true. You are yeah. letting down the team a little bit. And I think, but I think that uh, that these these shows we did in Winnipeg, these particular Burton Cummings theater shows, I thought were uh, the I felt really good about. I think we all felt really good about. So um, and and the crowd just seemed really generous and supportive and. And so maybe that was a turning point. Maybe uh. Glenn Gould, legendary pianist, one, once uh, said that he was w always far more nervous playing in Toronto than is he would right? be debuting at New York or any, any anything else. Yeah, it is the hometown for sure. You, oh, I think you so, just yeah. want to do well, right? Exactly. That's part yeah, of it yeah. too. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's interesting. I was thinking about uh, the uh, a live record. And I was thinking about, um, especially for Gen Xers, we remember back to the '70s and '80s, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, and and. Uh, especially when we were kid, kids in the 70s. Remember, uh, I still, still in the 80s as well. Remember mm. a live album used to be a big deal? Sure. A live album was like the Stones have put out a live album or you know, yeah. Queen Live Killers that came out in the late 70s. Or, uh, you know, and mm. the reason was because it was really hard to record to get, a, to get a really good recording of a, of a live record. Right. Uh, and so it was like a big, the only big bands could do it and they, uh, otherwise it wouldn't sound so good. And now we live in this era where, uh, you know, I talked about this with South by Southwest last, last week. Any band that plays a gig, pretty much within 24 hours, there's a live video of them <laughs> on YouTube, you know, yeah. that somebody shot on their camera or they've, you know, uh, got some cheap equi uh, recording equipment. So when you put out a live record, what does it mean to you? What are you trying to communicate to your fans? I guess I guess you're trying to communicate uh, a bit of what it's like to be there. I mean, it can't it can't be what it's like to be there, which is which is the great kind of um, 
you know, primary thing about live music that's never going to change, right? But um, for me, it, it's kind of about making uh, making a new artistic statement with with the materials you have at hand, right? Like it's all these songs put together, uh, and they work off each other in different in different ways than they did on the on your studio mm. recordings. For, so for me, when I hear and and I think it applies to all those great live live records. Um, it's 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 kind of a it's a it's kind of a second statement, a second take on the songs. The so songs, for me, that's kind of what it is. The songs in this performance are that uh, that we hear on this uh, recording are are tweaked, are are augmented. They're a little different from yeah. what we hear on the stu- studio. Mm-hmm. So songs, the songs evolve as you play them over the years and, and yeah. morph into something else? Yeah, I think that they do. I think, I think that they, they, uh, they change their meanings and, and, um, and, uh, and, and in different contexts, they mean different things. And, uh, and I think, you know, a lot of, a lot of these songs, um, f- for me, the, the entire meaning of them have, have changed. You know, some of them started out in my mind as really despairing songs and, and are now, um, uh, don't mean that at all. So it's kind of joyous sing-alongs. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, there, one of the highlights has to be hearing you sing "One Great City" uh, to the hometown crowd of Winnipeg. Right. Uh, of course, the chorus of the song is "I Hate Winnipeg," uh, but it seems wow. to be a fan favorite I- in Winnipeg. What do you think that says about the city and its attitude? Um, geez, that's a good question. I think that it. I think it says that it probably has a has a healthy attitude towards itself. That it can uh, that it can handle um, handle some. Uh, uh, yeah, it can handle it. I think that's some self-deprecation. Yeah, some exactly. Ribbing. Yeah, yeah. Well, and the song itself is kind of about, um, you know, uh, in my mind, is is about, um, you know, it's just kind of opposed to boosterism, but it's actually, I think, quite a loving, uh, a loving song. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, the live album with songs of each of your previous discs, discs on it. Uh, does it seem like a snapshot of where the band's at right now? And and what do you think this body of work says about uh, where the weaker thans are? Yeah, I do. I do think it's a kind of uh, a nice nice portrait of of who we are right now as a band. And 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 um, I think it's kind of a nice uh, uh, to me. Yeah, it's kind of a nice marker in in our life as a band. Um, and uh, and you know we're we're going to start working on another record. Eventually, we're, we're notoriously slow about it, and probably even slower this time. Right. We're just going to take our time. So, it seemed like a nice spot. Why even nice. slower this time? Uh, I think just getting because creaky, getting yeah, a little yeah, older. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. 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 It <laughs> takes longer to get up those stairs. And, uh, <laughs> right, right, right. right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Not easy waking up. That's right. That's right. <laughs> no, but really, why? Well, it's why? interesting because we we yeah we were at at this festival uh, last month in Australia, and I was talking to the promoter, and he said that he had booked us because. Uh, uh, he thought we would be good for the older, older <laughs> crowd there. <laughs> and I thought, oh wow! How did that feel? That, that felt, it felt fine actually. I was fine with it, but right, I was, right, right. I was like, that's weird. You go from being a young band to suddenly you're, you're, uh, you're still, you're still <laughs> young, you're still <laughs> a young band. But you know, it is, but, a, it know, is a reciprocal. But in the ba- in the life of. Like, the music industry it's not uh, you know. I, well in the life of the li- music industry yeah. it's you're long in the tooth exactly, i mean it's and, exactly, yeah. and that's part of the trick part of the trick is staying together i've that, always I, I've I believe that always too. believed that you yeah, know yeah, if you no, can if you can slog it out you know if you can just stay a band you well that was another real statics thing that david dean always said don't break up I yeah think that until they broke up well yeah, yeah that but, was I know, yeah. but it took but 20 they, years they, yeah yeah exactly yeah. Uh, I was just going to say very quickly. There's a there is a reciprocity uh, on a recording like this. We hear we hear the band, but we also hear the audience. And you must have a fair mm. sense of who your audience is now after mm. playing uh, for a few years. Who, wh- wh- how would you characterize your audience? Oh, that's a good question. I'm uh, I'm constantly surprised by by uh, by them. They're, they yeah. There's a it's a broad audience and and really. Um, Attentive and and I'm and I think we're all really extremely grateful that they're that they're there. I think S- we smart people with shockingly good musical taste. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, <laughs> I'd like to think so. Uh, John, you, you, <laughs> you guys are going to play another song. I don't want to sure. take you out. We got five minutes left here. So okay. what what song are you going to play? Uh, we're going to do another one that isn't on the record. I think excellent. Psalm. <laughs> this one's called Psalm for the Elks Lodge Last Call. All right, head on over. Okay, there. I'll go over there. 